Good Friday evening and welcome into our home. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There he tested them, Exodus 15. I once visited the testing room of a large steel mill. I was surrounded by instruments and equipment that tested pieces of steel to their limits and measured their breaking points. Some pieces had been twisted until they broke and then were labeled with the level of pressure they could withstand. Some had been stretched to their breaking point with their level of strength also noted. Others had been compressed to their crushing point and measured. Because of the testing, the manager of the mill knew exactly how much stress and strain each piece of steel could endure if it were to be used to build a ship, building, or bridge. It is often much the same with God's children. He does not want us to be like the fragile vases of glass or porcelain. He wants us to be like these toughened pieces of steel, able to endure twisting and crushing pressure to the utmost without collapse. God does not want us to be like greenhouse plants, which are sheltered from rough weather, but like strong, storm-beaten oaks, not like the sand dunes that were driven back and forth by every gust of wind, but like the granite mountains that withstand the fiercest storms. Yet to accomplish this, he must take us into his testing room of suffering. And many of us need no other argument than our own experience to prove the suffering is in God's de in, indeed God's testing room of faith. It is quite easy for us to talk, uh, to, to talk, for us to talk and to theorize about faith, but God often puts us into His crucible of affliction to test the purity of our gold and to separate the dross from the metal. How happy we are if the hurricanes that blow across life's raging sea have the effect of making Jesus more precious to us. It is better to weather the storm with Christ than to sail smooth waters without Him. What if God could not manage to mature your life without suffering? You know, I've always found it interesting that air... Uh, okay, let me say with this. If you know me, you know I love airplanes. If you come to my office, there are airplanes all over the place. It looks more like a kid's, kid's playroom than it does an office because I just love airplanes. And one of the things that have fascinated me about airplanes over the years is that airplanes are able to be made with lighter and lighter material, which makes them more fuel efficient and able to fly better and more aerodynamic, which is really cool if you think about it. But then for a long time, I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. Why would you make them out of lighter material? Then they're not as strong. They're more subject to fatigue and, well, they won't hold up in a, a crash or whatever. Whatever. And then I found out one day that that's not true. What's been amazing is as they made the materials longer, materials are also stronger. So they're str or lighter. They're, they're, so they get lighter and stronger at the same time. Now that doesn't make any sense because I think of steel and I think of hard steel, right? Hard, thick steel being the strongest material, but that's not necessarily true. Now these planes are made out of carbon material that is so much stronger than steel, but yet so light and able to perform so much better. Isn't that kind of like our life? For every time God allows us to go through our hardships, He's making us stronger. But every time we go through these hardships, we also get a little lighter. Because every time we get stronger, we get lighter. Because every time we go through these things, we know more about God's peace. We know more about His love. We know more about the world. We know more about sharing his love with others. And in sharing his love with others and serving people and loving people, we feel better, right? When we do things for other people, we feel better. And therefore, as God strengthens us and makes us stronger, we actually become lighter. The burdens are lift off of our life. We know that wonderful gift of his peace and his presence even more. It's kind of weird if you think about it. It's kind of like that material they use on airplanes. The lighter it gets, the stronger it really is. The stronger we get, the lighter we get. That's pretty awesome. Through all the trials and troubles I've been through in my life, and there have been many, and those of you that know me know that's true, there's one thing I can unequivocally say. Through the death of my kids, through the struggles of my mental illness, through health struggles I've had, there's, and through my, my childhood, there's one thing I can most definitely say. God has made me lighter. I know peace more than I ever have. I worry less, and I have less anxiety. Not to say that I don't still have those things I do, but trust me, they're a lot less. And I'm able to tap into that peace a little more quickly than times before each time those trials come. In fact, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for all those times of life that I've gone through. They've made me who I am a better husband, a better pastor, a better person. Not perfect, still a long way to go, but better. 
And so in reality, the stronger we get, the lighter we become. As God allows these times into our lives, He's using them with the intent and purpose to make us stronger, to make us lighter in His peace, His love, His forgiveness, and His life. In His name, amen. For our prayer tonight from our hymnal, for evening prayers, O gladsome light, O grace, O gladsome light, O grace of God the Father's face, eternal splendor wearing, celestial holy night, bless our Savior Jesus Christ, joyful in thine appearing. As daylight turns to night, we see the fading light, our evening hymn outpouring, Father of might unknown, uh, Father of might unknown, thee his incarnate Son and Holy Ghost adoring. To thee of right belongings, all praise of holy songs. O Son of God, life giver thee, therefore ever, O Most High, the world doth glorify and shall exalt thee forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey guys, thanks again for joining us. It's been great to be with you tonight. And I pray that our Lord, most mighty and holy God, will bless you and keep you in his care tonight and always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love you. Good night. Bye-bye.